Hello. Hello, Hello. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 Seinfeld quotes. Mm, giddy up. For this list, we're going over the most popular catchphrases, sayings, and concepts popularized by the legendary sitcom. If there's a Seinfeld quote whose absence has you asking, what's the deal? Let us know in the comments. Number 20. That's gold, Jerry. Gold. Kenny Banya is a so-so comedian who always seems to ride Jerry's coattails. In one episode, the mediocre funny man loses his girlfriend after a poor performance. This leads to Jerry mentoring Banya to help improve his material. Why do they call it Ovaltine? The mug is round. The jar is round. They should call it Roundtine. The two end up brainstorming a way to make Ovaltine funny. Ultimately, Jerry comes up with a silly joke about the milky drink mix that has Banya saying, That's gold, Jerry. Gold! It's a phrase that's definitely become synonymous with Banya. And if you want to express appreciation for something and reference the show in the same breath, try this golden phrase. Number 19. You gotta see the baby! The gang has few recurring friends who appear throughout the show, but none are as audibly distinct as Carol, a nasally voiced woman who used to live in the building. She and her husband Michael frequently invite them to visit them to see their children. Or as Jerry and Elaine put it, You gotta see the baby. When are you gonna see the baby? Ironically, Carol herself never says the exact line. She only comes very close to it a few times. When Jerry and friends do oblige and see the baby, it always makes for a memorable and usually disastrous scene. Is it me or was that the ugliest baby you have ever seen? Oh, I couldn't look. It was like the Pekingese. Maybe it would have been best for Carol to keep her children out of Seinfeld's sight. Number 18. Significant Shrinkage during a trip to the Hamptons, George gets undressed after spending some time swimming. Unfortunately, Jerry's date Rachel walks in on him as he's getting changed. Oh my god! I'm sorry, I thought this was the baby's room. I'm really sorry. I was in the pool! I was in the pool! George is majorly embarrassed because the cold water made a certain body part appear smaller than normal. While talking to Jerry about it, George uses a memorable phrase to reference the phenomenon. You mean shrinkage? Yes! <laughs> Significant shrinkage. His and Jerry's talk with Elaine about shrinkage is also iconic. This quote helped popularize the term and spread awareness of what can happen to men right after a dip into the water. Number 17. I can't spare a square. Elaine is in the bathroom at a movie and finds herself unknowingly sitting in a stall next to Jerry's then-girlfriend, Jane. Elaine quickly realizes that she's completely out of toilet paper. When she asks for help from her neighbor, Jane refuses with a hilarious response. I don't have a square to spare. I can't spare a square. While Elaine is left desperate in everyone's worst nightmare scenario, we're still laughing at the situation. It gets even better when Jane gives us her perspective on why she couldn't loan the toilet paper in the first place. Elaine ultimately manages to get her revenge by recreating the situation at the coffee shop with the roles reversed. Wait a minute. I know you. That's right, honey. And I know you. Go! 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 Number 16. They're real and they're spectacular. When Elaine claims that Jerry's girlfriend Sidra has a couple of fake assets, he becomes convinced she's right. However, an accidental fall by Elaine in the sauna has her retracting her previous belief. Anyway, uh, they're real. <laughs> Excuse me? I think they might be real. But everything goes south when Elaine and Jerry's friendship is exposed. Sidra becomes convinced that the sauna incident was meant to determine if she was all authentic. She breaks it off with Jerry in dramatic fashion and returns to tell him, And by the way, they're real oh. and they're spectacular. <laughs> the sentiment is echoed during the gang's trial by Jackie Childs in the show's finale. We have to love Sidra's confidence. Number 15. Did you just double dip that chip? While Elaine and Jerry are having their escapade with Sidra, George is off having an iconic moment of his own. He attended the wake of his girlfriend Betsy's aunt in the hopes of accelerating their relationship. 
unfortunately, George makes a party faux pas that is noticed and called out. Did, did you just double dip that chip? We can't defend him because we clearly saw him dip a chip, take a bite, and dip it again. While this term may have existed before Seinfeld, George's ill-timed party foul made it a recognizable phrase today. We just don't recommend getting into a physical fight after using this double dipping quote. You dip the way you want to dip, I'll dip the way I want to dip. <laughs> Give me the chip! Hey, hey, hey! Get out! Number 14. George is getting upset. The guys encounter a guy named Jimmy at the gym who refers to himself in the third person. After spending time with him, George starts to pick up this habit in small ways. Moments of stress particularly bring it out. We all remember how he used it to react to Kung Pao chicken in a sweaty moment. George likes his chicken spicy. However, we wanted to put the spotlight on a more universal quote. During this storyline and future episodes, George will remark, George is getting upset! He uses the quote in moments where he feels anxious or angry. It's both practically his catchphrase and a fun thing to say whenever things don't go your way. George is getting upset! <laughs> Number 13. Maybe the dingo ate your baby. In The Stranded episode, Elaine and Jerry get left behind at a party that George brought them to. A particularly miserable Elaine gets sick of one of the partygoers going on and on about her fiancé. The obnoxious woman eventually refers to her significant other as her baby. When she says that she lost the poor baby, Elaine replies, Maybe the dingo ate your baby. This is in reference to an unfortunate real-life tragedy in Australia. However, it's likely that many Americans won't even realize that this quote was the result of actual events. They'll just recall the phrase as one of Elaine's most memorable quotes. What? <laughs> the dingo ate your baby. <laughs> Number 12. Hello, Newman. Newman's a postal worker that's a good friend and neighbor to some people. But Jerry has very different feelings about him. Hello, Newman. The two of them have a mutual hatred that's one of the most entertaining rivalries in any sitcom. I will get even with you for this. You can count on it. Whenever they meet each other, Jerry will always deliver his hello in the same venomous way. It's a habit that extends even to Jerry's mother. Hello, Mr. Seinfeld. <laughs> it's the ultimate way to greet your nemesis if you have one. Actor Wayne Knight has reportedly been getting this said to him in real life for decades now. And honestly, it's hard to blame the fans for wanting to say this fun phrase. Number 11. Well, the jerk store called. They're running out of you. George is the avatar of pettiness. One of his most vindictive moments happens when co-worker Riley zings him for eating too much shrimp. On the way home, he comes up with a perfect comeback that he has to share with the group. Well, the jerk store called. They're running out of you. Unfortunately, the rest of the gang doesn't find his retort to be all that impressive. But not only does George stick to his guns, he also flies to another state just to use the line after Riley transfers to another job. Oh, yeah, Riley? <laughs> well, the jerk store called. They're running out of you. <laughs> What's the difference? You're their all-time bestseller! We've all come up with a lame comeback like Jerk Store, but George's dedication to making sure it was heard elevated this witty phrase in our books. Number 10. And you want to be my latex salesman. And what type of company is that? Latex. Latex manufacturers. When George is cornered by his unemployment officer, he invents a position. He claims he was attempting to get a job at a made-up latex company that happens to have Jerry's phone number. It's a very small industry, Vandalay. It's one of the reasons I wanted to work for them. A phone number. Like many of the lines on this list, it's the circumstances surrounding this line that make it all the more legendary. And what do I say about you? You're considering hiring me for your latex salesman. I'm going to hire you as my latex salesman? Right. I don't think so. When Kramer answers the phone and unintentionally destroys his friend's ruse, What delay industry? George tries to stop him while his pants are firmly around his ankles. His futile run sets up a great laugh-out-loud line courtesy of Jerry. And you want to be my latex salesman? <laughs> Number 9. But are you still master of your domain? Care to make it interesting? This phrase stood at the core of one of the most groundbreaking episodes of any sitcom. This perfectly crafted line ensured the foursome never had to say a word about a certain adult activity. 
All the while, the entire episode is completely focused on the concept. I come home and find my son treating his body like it was an amusement park. This brilliant wordplay helped net Larry David his only solo Emmy on the show for writing. So you're still master your domain. Yes. Yes, I am. The particular episode was also once chosen by TV Guide as the greatest TV episode of all time. But are you still master of your domain? I am king of the county. We don't think any of that well-deserved praise would have been possible had this line not become a virtual catchphrase. Are you still master of your domain? Oh. <laughs> I'm queen of the castle. Number eight, these pretzels are making me thirsty. Is that a line in a Woody Allen movie? When Kramer's unique charisma manages to gain the attention of a famed director, he's given a line in one of his movies. And you can bet that this quirky New Yorker is going to get everything he can out of it. And I'm sitting there with Woody, and uh, I say, I turn to him and I go, uh, boy, these pretzels are making me thirsty. <laughs> is that how you're going to say it? The line is made all the more memorable by the fact that Kramer repeats it multiple times. He also tries to get the entire crew to chime in as well. These pretzels are making me thirsty. The especially overwrought version of the phrase uttered by George will also stay with us. These pretzels are making me thirsty! Thanks to multiple ways of saying this quote, we will always utter it whenever we're eating something salty. These pretzels are making me thirsty. <laughs> Number seven, a festivus for the rest of us. Frank invented a holiday? He's so prolific. When Frank Costanza realized he was raining blows down upon another man over a doll he was trying to buy his son for Christmas, he realized there had to be another way. What happened to the doll? It was destroyed. The result is a new holiday and a classic Seinfeld line to boot. George. You're forgetting how much Festivus has meant to us all. Perhaps it's the catchy, rhyming nature of it all. Or maybe the late, great Jerry Stiller's outstanding delivery is what won us over. Whatever the X Factor is here, we know that hearing this quote always brings a smile to our faces. A new holiday was born. A festivus for the rest of us. Let the airing of grievances begin. I got a lot of problems with you people. Now you're going to hear about it. Number six, but I don't want to be a pirate. Well. <laughs> Excuse me? We've all been in the situation where we just can't make out what someone is saying, but we don't want to ask them to repeat it yet again. Normally, there's no harm in playing along despite having no idea what's happening. Uh huh. Yeah. However, when Jerry finds himself in this situation, he ends up having to wear an ugly puffy shirt on the Today Show. His whiny and almost infantile response says it all. This? <laughs> I agreed to wear this? Yeah, yeah. Despite empathizing with his situation, we can't stop laughing at his desperation to escape his fate. I, I can't wear this puffy shirt on TV. It's a shame it was too late for Jerry to jump ship and avoid the shirt completely. But I don't want to be a pirate. <laughs> Number five, do you think you're sponge worthy? I tell you, I think birth control should be discussed in an open forum. After Elaine's preferred form of birth control is discontinued, she manages to acquire a case of contraceptive sponges. A case? A case of sponges? So she decides to use them judiciously. This scenario created another golden opportunity for Seinfeld writers to avoid the censors coming down on them. During the episode, Elaine's potential lover is grilled about what makes him worthy to spend a night or two with Elaine. She opens up the discussion with one iconic question. So you think you're sponge worthy? Yes, I think I'm sponge worthy. This incredibly memorable quote was a great way to give Elaine agency without stirring up controversy. And to top it all off, it was incredibly funny. All right, let's go. Okay. <laughs> Number four, yada, yada, yada. You want to say goodbye? I was just getting out of the shower and yada, yada, yada. All right, enough! George's latest girlfriend has a tendency to leave out the juiciest parts of any story. She instead opts to replace the best details with this infuriating substitute phrase. Before long, George is borrowing the phrase to skip out on things he doesn't want to talk about either. We were engaged to be married. Uh... We bought the wedding invitations and uh, yada, 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 I'm still single. Believe it or not, this phrase could have been around as early as the 1940s. However, it just seems perfectly suited for this Seinfeld episode. So speaking of exes, mm. my old boyfriend came over late last night and yada, yada, yada. Anyway, I'm really tired today. 
Named by the Paley Center as the funniest TV phrase of all time, we thought about including it and then yada yada yada, here it is. What do you think she was tired from? Well, obviously the yada yada. Number three, Serenity Now. Serenity Now! Serenity Now! What is that? Another creation associated with George's outrageous father, Frank, Serenity Now was supposed to serve as a calming influence for the eccentric man and his escalating blood pressure. Throw it up! Serenity Now! But when he chooses to scream it at the top of his lungs, it's upsetting for his wife and hilarious for the audience. I told you to fix that thing. Serenity now! The phrase eventually spread outside the Costanza family to Cosmo Kramer. So you're using Frank's relaxation method? Jerry, the anger, it just melts right off. Serenity now. <laughs> Serenity now. While the eccentric neighbor used it to keep calm at first, it wasn't long before he started yelling it too. Serenity now! There, I got it! Given how wrong things seem to go for anyone who uses this phrase, we wouldn't recommend saying it to de stress. Serenity now. Insanity later. Number two, not that there's anything wrong with that. During the outing episode, the writers wanted to take aim at people who struggle to accept LGBTQ people in society. The story revolves around rumors that Jerry and George are a little bit more than friends. We did that whole thing for your benefit. We knew you were eavesdropping. That's why my friend said all that. It was on purpose. We're not gay. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Every time they want to dismiss the claims while not wanting to come off as prejudiced, they utter one phrase. Their approach to an LGBTQ plus plot at the time won the episode a Glad Media Award. Oh, no, now she's heard everything. What are we going to do? There's anything wrong with it. No, no, of course not. People's personal sexual preferences are nobody's business but their own. And it also helped create a phrase that the show will be tied to until the end of time. He's the phone man. <laughs> not that there's anything wrong with it. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, no soup for you. Hey, Jerry, I didn't know you liked soup. Hard to believe. This guy makes the best soup in the city, Jerry, the best. Of all the guest stars on Seinfeld, there are perhaps none more well-known than the soup Nazi. He's the head of a restaurant specializing in soup who has militant views of what is acceptable of his customers. Excuse me, uh, I think you forgot my bread. Bread, two dollars extra. Two dollars, but everyone in front of me got free bread. You want bread? Yes, please. Three dollars! <laughs> what? No soup for you! This strict and mustachioed chef won't hesitate to take away your precious bisque or mulligatawny if you so much as order the wrong way with one phrase. Does, has anyone ever told you you look exactly like Al Pacino? You know, scent of a woman. Hooah! Hooah! <laughs> Very good. Very good. You know something? <laughs> no soup for you! His acclaimed quote became a massive hit. The character would later appear in several commercial appearances. I'll throw in the soup Nazi. Soup for you! And the chef's actor, Larry Thomas, made a cameo on Scrubs. Who knew a phrase about soup could become so important in pop culture? I gotta go. Oh, he is so the soup Nazi. Trick him. What is it again? It's like you're out of luck in the soup department. No soup for you! Ha! Right. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Watch Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.